Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use dynamic M parameters to control the number of rows that are returned when you're using direct query. Stay tuned. If you find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. All right, dynamic in parameters. They've been out a while, but they didn't support SQL and Oracle and sources like that. Now they definitely support SQL Server, so I had to do a video on it. And to be honest, I had this idea in my head I was gonna do something with store procedures, but Teo Lachev beat me to the point. You should go read his blog post. I'll have a link to it in the description below. And I thought about another one, true story, table value functions. My buddy Chris Webb beat me to that one, and you'll get a link to it also in the description below. Doesn't matter, all right? So I, banged my head a little bit and I thought, oh. I did a video a while ago where we used a paginated report to get around the export limits of Power BI. Not just the export limits, but the number of rows that can be returned when you're using direct query. And so I was working with this customer and they had this table and they wanted to return, you know, millions and millions of rows. And they said, hey, let's just limit the number of rows that are returned back. And then if it's more than a certain amount, have them go look at a paginated report. Well. We couldn't limit the rows, so we did some kludgy aggregation stuff, which wasn't quite what the report consumers wanted, but it solved the problem. There's a link in the description below. You should go check out that video I did. But now I'm revisiting it and I'm doing it a different way using these dynamic in parameters, all right? So you guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. I'm here in Power Query and I've connected to a couple of tables. You can see it's internet sales, category, product, and subcategory. This one's definitely in direct query mode and these, maybe they're in dual or direct query. And then I created a parameter called top row and let's take a look at this parameter. This parameter is of type text and I set my current value to 25. And then I created another table that will act as a slicer and will be used by my report consumers to specify the number of rows they want to return. Now to set up this whole process of using dynamic in parameters, I did a few things. First thing, of course, I created the parameter. Then I created this table. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that parameter in internet sales. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say keep top 10 rows. Click OK, and now it filters it. If I go into the M, I can say instead of use the hard coded value, use top rows. Click done. We get an error. It's because of the type of my parameter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to switch this out. We're going to go right here. We're going to add a new row and we're going to call this top return rows. And it's going to say if top rows is equal to I want more than one else number dot from top rows. And then what I'm going to do, I don't fit my comma, I'm going to take the result of that and pop it in here. I'm going to click done. And now you see those 25 rows. If I go here and put like 15 and go back, it changes to 15. All right. You need to do those three things. You need to create the table that's going to be used to pass the values to that parameter, create that parameter. And then you need to use the parameter in the query. After all that's done, we're going to go ahead and choose close and apply. Once we click close and apply, you're going to need to do a few things. First, you can see I set all my relationships up and you can see this table is disconnected. The table that I'm going to use to pass values to that parameter, my dynamic M parameter, it can be related. It can be a disconnected table. You just got to be careful because if it's a column on the same table that you've added that parameter, it can cause some filtering because it's going to filter down to that value. So be careful, create a separate table that you're going to use to pass that value in. There's some other limits and considerations that you should go look at and you should go read the documentation. And I'll make, be sure to provide a link to the documentation in the description below. Once everything's done, you go find the column that you want to pass the value to. In my case, it's going to be this top rows. So I want to pass the value from this column into that parameter. So you go choose that column and then on properties, you expand out advanced and you'll see bind to parameter and then your parameters will show up. There's some other options for multi-select, select all and select all value. Chris Webb discusses those in his blog post. They actually discuss them in the documentation. So 
if you're trying to pass multiple values and things like that, you should definitely go read the documentation. If you guys have some questions and you want me to do a video on how to pass multiple values, just post it in the comments. I'm happy to do one. So once all that's done, it's pretty simple. And so let me bring you over to my report and I'll explain what I've done here. So you can see I'm only returning one row. That's because I have, I want more selected and you can see it says you need a paginated report. But if I go here and choose hundred, it returns 100 rows. You can see from my row count and it says, see your data below, choose 200. It returns 200 rows. All this is in direct query and I'm using Azure Data Studio to trace. So I'm going to show you something. So I started this trace up. And so if I go back and I'm going to choose 700, so we'll let it run head over to Azure Data Studio. And so now you can see it's producing the query that's using that 700. And so whenever I'm selecting things or doing things, it's actually constructing that query and sending that query back. Now I have this button because we were doing the requirements and they said, okay, we want them to see up to a thousand rows, anything more than a thousand rows, they're going to have to go and use something else to export that data. So that's why I chose, I want more. And you can see the value changes to, you need a paginated report. And if you click that button, maybe you could head over to another page that's using the paginated visual or maybe you set up a dynamic URL that's sending them out to a paginated report and then they could export they can view as much data as they want I have videos showing you how to do all of that and that video that I was talking about that kind of set the stage for this one there's a link to it in the description if you want to see how to set all this up all right what do you guys think you got any questions you got any comments are you using dynamic in parameters I'd love to know, right? This is an interesting technique. All right, so you guys know what I like to do. If you got any more questions, post it in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button, if you like my video, hit thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.